hi and welcome to this uh, stream. Today we are recording at uh, headquarters, Haifa Klum headquarters here in Denmark. Uh, my name is Pau. Uh, I work at Haifa Klum, obviously. And um, we do these streams um, because uh, we want to show you uh, some cool new products. We want to talk about products. Uh, and we do this stream because we uh, have something called Hi-Fi Weeks. Uh, we dedicate a couple of weeks um, to great sound, to music. Uh, we dedicate it to playing that great music on great stereo. Um, and we just want to do this because we can't invite you into the events that we usually do. So, so we do these streams now and we've invited some of our dearest and closest uh, suppliers. And we're looking very much forward to that. And um, today, uh, my visitor is from Dali, uh, the loudspeaker factory. And uh, Thomas Knudsen is here. Thank you. Uh, and you are the product manager? No, or I'm in the, you're the I'm sales in, manager. I'm the sales Sorry. manager. Sorry. And actually, or one of the sales managers. One of the sales managers, but you're the senior sales manager. I'm the senior, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm the only one Hands old enough. The grow gray hair, and or the gray hair as well. Yeah. No yeah. more pay. You been just... there way too long. Yeah, yeah, been there way too long. So, but anyway, thank you very much for coming. Thanks um, for we're for looking very much you. forward. And uh, before we start, uh, I'd like to say to you that uh, you can uh, write questions in the comments below, and we will have people answering them. Um, and we also received some questions before we start the stream, so I'll ask you during. Um, but for now, Thomas, what is it actually you do at Dali? Sometimes I wonder myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks uh, for the intro. Uh, yeah. I'm in the sales department. Yeah. Uh, having most of my job is with the export business to okay. a number of markets uh, worldwide. Um, and but I also like to thank you, Haifa Club, for. Having us, it's a, it's a great opportunity for us to communicate with consumers out there in these times. Yes. We hope for open shops Very as much. soon as possible. Very much. But maybe I should start talking just uh, briefly and short about who Dali is, because we, uh, uh, we are founded close to 40 years ago. So that means we have an experience and, uh, uh, and we have a, a development and production uh, experience for speakers, both to movie lovers, but also to music lovers. Yes. And, and DALI stands for Danish Audiophile Loudspeaker Industries. Okay. We were founded back in 1983 by a guy called Peter Lindorf, which we all know. Yeah, we know. Um, who at that time, a few years before that, started up the Hi-Fi Club. He started the Hi-Fi Club by bringing in brands from, from the UK and from the US and, and selling them uh, in Denmark. Um, and quite quickly after that, he, he came to the... Because he thought that the, these speakers were way too, la too expensive. Okay. Uh, and he thought it should be possible to make a Danish speaker who had the okay. same performance, the same nice look, but only for half the price. Okay. So that was his basic principle behind uh, starting up Dali. And still today, that philosophy is something is uh, is behind everything we are doing. Okay. So, and and you're you're quite big. It's quite a big company nowadays. At least we, we grew a lot over you the years. Lot, yeah. um, in all modesty, we will describe ourselves as as a, a, a speaker uh, brand in in Scandinavia, which is amongst the leading uh, speaker okay. brand or yes. market leader. We would call ourselves, and on many markets. Out there, for example, uh, traditionally big speaker brand markets like uh, Germany, like England, like yeah. Japan, we are amongst uh, the leading brands uh, okay. on these ones. And how many countries? We are exporting to more than 70 countries. That's pretty cool, I think. Uh, and actually yeah. last year in, in 2020, we ended up manufacturing more than 300,000 speakers. And okay. now we established ourselves in with sales offices in seven countries, okay. and uh, we are way uh, well, uh, just above 300 employees. Okay, so it is big, yeah. We we have we have been we have been growing, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, so um, news, we actually we've we've uh, gotten these uh, wireless speakers for mm -hmm. some time now, mm -hmm. and. Uh, we appreciate it very much. It gives new possibilities, but 
what is it and what can it do actually? Yeah, what, what I wanted to do today and, and what I wanted to focus on today uh, is uh, talk about active speakers yeah. or some, some call them powered speakers. But what is that? Um, basically, it means a speaker where we as manufacturer has taken the choice to put in an amplifier in the speaker okay. instead of the traditional way where people buy an amplifier, have speaker cables and a uh, speaker setup. That's yeah. the, the basic uh, idea behind. And, and uh, it gives the consumer a number of advantages. Of course, you, you don't need cables. Don't need, obviously, there, there is a physical saving yeah. uh, of, of space in, yeah. in your living room. And there's also a saving on the number of cable you use in your setup. Of course. No matter if it's just a traditional stereo, stereo listening setup or it's a TV uh, setup. Okay. So, so actually, the biggest question for me is, is uh, about quality. Can, can you do the same quality wireless as you can do it when you use cables? Probably one of the biggest questions we get yeah. uh, is that if we go on any compromise yeah. uh, with, with quality. And, and the, the clear answer is no. Uh, okay, you don't? No, not at all. Uh, and but actually, we, Yeah, and actually we, we, we suggest that with some of the solutions we have made, we actually, for the, for the money, we create some solutions which sometimes sounds better than, uh, than a traditional uh, solution with amplifier and, and speakers yeah, okay. because there are some choices being taken when you manufacture when you develop a product like that yeah. for example you take the the amplifier and the woofer and you optimize them to work together when you manufacture a passive speaker um, you need to manufacture something who fits well with a number of uh, amplifiers all, all over the amplifiers, world in yeah, different sizes and different price levels. Here, you simply take the amplifier and the and the uh, woofer, and you tell them to work as good as possible to each other. So you simply optimize the performance. Yeah, okay, so so you so the customer is also sure to get what fits perfect amplifier loudspeaker wise. We have taken the choice. Y you've taken the choice. Yeah, for yeah the yeah. consumer <laughs> for something uh, as uh, optimized. Yeah, and then at the same time, what we also can do is we can we can. Uh, we can use what we call a limiter. Okay. And a limiter simply means that if you play your favorite music and you, we all have a tendency, tendency to, to play too loud, yes. you turn up the volume, it will simply play too loud, it will decrease the bass in the setup. Okay. And, th and this means that you never will hurt your speakers. You don't okay, blow so up you can woofer. play as loud as you want. You can. Without ruining your speakers. No problem like okay. that. And that, that would have saved me some money during the <laughs> past years. If you come, uh, if you come back, and uh, from a weekend uh, uh, away and your teenager yeah. has been blowing up the, the speakers and you need to go, uh, go and buy a new woofer. We all know uh, we, we don't like that. I actually that. use here, that excuse sometimes, but it's me. But. Here we have that solution that you never yeah, okay. uh, so you can do that. Uh, blow up your woofer. So, so uh, these active speakers, built-in amps, are, are, are that the market to come and the only thing or will there still be passive speakers? Um, and that was actually one of the questions uh, somebody asked yeah, yeah. before here, and and uh, and it's, it's a good question. Uh, we can we can say that yes, the future is active, active. speakers, okay. no doubt about it, because technology in general yeah. has developed to a level where we see everything get smaller and better. Uh, think about cars and phones and 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 so on. And yeah. uh, so there's no doubt because today you can you can actually have an amplifier who is very, very small and have a big performance. Just yeah. have in mind our Dali Catch, a Bluetooth uh, Speakers, speaker, yeah. very small, but with an amazing uh, sound uh, level and the sound uh, quality. Yeah. So yes, it is the future and we will be developing more solutions. But our core business is also passive speakers and we are a speaker brand. Yes. And without the development and the innovation of new ways of making speakers, we wouldn't be able to make these active speakers. So it goes hand in hand, you can say. Yeah, okay, so apart from the amplifier, the speaker itself is the same technology as you use. Totally. Yeah. What we will see today is it. actually we have taken some of the, the well-known Dali series, the okay. Rubicon and the Oberon, and simply just added to them a, an amplifier an ampli okay. and turned them wireless. Okay. So my, my suggestion or my guess is that it goes hand in hand and and, and the future would maybe be half and half yeah, what, okay. we, what we will f focus on. So for some of us that still loves cables, we can still buy Dali speakers in the we years are, to come. We are a bunch of, uh, of, uh, of Audify guys yeah. working at Dali, uh, so no doubt uh, there's still a good focus on that. That was a nice word for old. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
And the, 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 latest, um, the latest product in the, in, the, in the line of active speakers coming uh, from Dali in the, in the recent couple of years is the Oberon C series, okay. uh, consisting of a bookshelf speaker, an on-wall speaker, and a, and a floor-standing tower speaker. And the Oberon C series, it stands on the shoulder of, um, of uh, the, the other speakers we've been making in the last couple of years, the Callistos okay. and the Rubicon C. Okay, so you got three different series. Yes. And three now. different price ranges exactly. as well. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And I'll come back to yeah. more deep presentation on, on, on the Oberon okay. C and the, and the Rubicon C. And, and all of them based on the series that are already in production. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and the Oberon C is also, or you can say all the, the speakers we have uh, in the wireless section, they are based on the same technology and uh, some of the same ideas. And this gives actually the consumer and the options for the right sound solution in the home. Okay. I can, my, my best suggestion is actually I can recommend people to visit an Hi-Fi Klubben store and, and actually have a look into these solutions, how they can fit, yes. no matter if it's just a stereo listening position you are looking for or it's actually an integration with the TV. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can do both. You can do both. It's not only for music. Yes. Can we, can we see? It? The Oberon is... We have uh, the Oberon C down here. Yeah, this is the Oberon on-wall C. Uh, from the front, you, it looks exactly like the normal Oberon uh, Because I have one of these in my shop. That, exactly. It looks exactly the same. With the but if you turn around, you will simply see a difference. Is that you have an amplifier built in here. Ah, okay. And you have a power cable. A power cord. But no terminals for the, for the speaker cables. Okay. Yeah, I could still put it on the wall. I just need power and that's it. Yes. So this one on wall. And we have the Oberon 1C. The 1C. And we also have a, a tower uh, yeah. speaker, a floor standing, standing Oberon speaker. 7C. Yeah. yeah, okay. But a wireless speaker solution from Dali consists of, uh, of the heart in, in, in it all. And that's what yeah. we call a hub. Oh, okay. A so-called hub. Yeah. Uh, it works as a pre-amplifier uh, that can be connected with both analog and digital sources. Um, and transmitting the signal or the sound from this to the speakers and then the conversion and the amplification happens in the speaker. Ah, okay, so a few questions here. But, so you need, you need two speakers and you need a hub. Yes, exactly. That's correct. Okay, exactly. yes. No speakers without a hub. Yeah. And, and um, then another question, I think many of us, what, the sound quality. Mm -hmm. When you do wireless, mm -hmm. You, you, you do wireless to this one and you do wireless from it yeah. to this one. Mm -hmm. That's a, is there any loss or? We have taken the choice, instead of using traditional Wi-Fi, yeah. we have taken the choice and use an audio protocol, okay. which more or less is creating a, a band between, or a certain type of Wi-Fi between the hub and the speakers. Uh, and then we can transmit uh, the signal in highest quality, highest, quality, highest possible quality. Yeah. Okay. A fundamental principle in, in the whole platform is, uh, is simply to send the signal as high quality as possible, yes. but also uh, has a little latency as possible. Yeah. Um, which if you, for example, use this for a TV solution, you have the, 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 the lip sync, yeah. um, there should be no latency in this one. And here we are down to, to, uh, to 10 microseconds uh, okay. in latency. So, you so that's that. a, nothing no. you, you can uh, think about, yeah. So, so when looking at this, the compact, you you've got you've got HDMI for yeah, your TV, exactly. Um, so TV sound, you just connect it to your TV wherever it is, and you can put the speakers mm -hmm. wherever, wherever you, want. you want. Exactly, that's a nice solution. And but the solution is that you can see here, you can actually hang uh, the the sound oh. of compact on the wall. You have small uh, holes here, so you can take this solution, you can hang this uh, on the back of the wall. It has yeah. HDMI. HDMI, yeah, yeah. Uh, ARC, as we call it, ah, okay. with the audio return the channel. Audio return channel yeah. That means you can use uh, the remote you already have for your TV for okay. controlling the, the sound on this and one. Also on the back, I see uh, different um, different combinations of what I can put to this one. I, actually, I can I can do a record player, or I can listen to my LPs. I can put on a CD player. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a, you have a digital input as well. Have a digital so input. have you uh, some type of, some type of streaming product yeah. you can add to this one as well. Yeah, okay, and Bluetooth as well. And Bluetooth as well. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's great. And this one, this is the the um, this one was the, the sound of compact. Yes. This is what we call the sound hub. Um, 
this one we we add on the back because it has the same the optical it has yeah. the analog inputs on the back but this one also uh, has ports on the back opening for that solution to build in a blue os module ah so we have a cooperation with Lindbrook, who's yeah. the manufacturer of NED blue sound okay and they have made a blue os module which fits for this sound hub okay so this means for people already having blue sound in the home then they can add this as uh, the prime listening position in the living room okay. and it works together with Blue Oz. And in another stream we're actually going to talk to guys from, from NAD and they got that MDC. So mm -hmm. it's the module you just put in and you got Simply streaming. It's just the module you put in and then you have st streaming, you can stream music, you can uh, you then control the whole system from your phone okay. via the, the Blue, Blue Sound okay. uh, application. So for this one Bluetooth and for this one both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Exactly. Okay, perfect. The signal you put in here um, and send to the speakers is uh, actually on, on full 24-bit 96 kilohertz. Okay. For, for people using uh, files, 24-bit files, yeah. uh, they have no problem uh, with that okay. here as well. So you guarantee the quality? Yes. Yeah. So you can say that, um, that using our own protocol in that way, uh, the quality by no means has been compromised uh, okay. over convenience. Yeah. Because very often when you use Wi-Fi uh, everywhere, yeah. it's for convenience. Yes. Here, it's both convenience but also quality because you have that full 24-bit protocol for sending the signal. Yes, most customers actually do have that question very much. Mm. You know, cables versus no cables and quality. So, so it's good to hear. Exactly. That's, that's the thing. If we use traditional Wi-Fi for transmitting this, uh, that Wi-Fi band would normally will be occupied by other things in your yes. home, everything from phones to Netflix and whatever you see. And, it's, and, and sometimes you have a lot of uh, bandwidth and other times it's yeah. occupied. Yeah. Uh, and that's also why there's a latency in general in, on Wi-Fi. Yeah, uh, okay. That if it's occupied, uh, for example, if you're listening to radio and you will, you will actually sometimes see that there's yeah, a latency. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But mostly it's, it's, it's for me, it's like, um, when the speaker on TV, mm. uh, you know, the sound is not able with what the mouth is doing, mm. and uh, that's no problem as well. Exactly. It's just, we okay. have, a, we have the, the latency here is so low that you never will experience that as okay. a problem. Perfect. You promise that. Exactly. I do. Um, when it's transmitted to the speakers, then yeah. each speaker uh, holds two amplifiers. Uh, okay. You have a digital crossover. Uh, the signal will then be uh, split into two different amplifiers. One amplifier is handling the bass yeah. units, and then the other ham amplifier handles the tweeter That's module. Yeah. Okay. And um, we have also chosen, because what you, norm what you have seen on, on other solutions from our competitors is to build in all that um, technology we spoke about before could have been principally built into the speaker as well. Yeah. But we have chosen to have this standing uh, as, as a standalone, yeah. uh, apart from, from the speakers. Um, because in this type, you can, you can actually put this hub close to your source. Whatever it's a turntable or it's a TV, you can have this one standing close mm. to the source and then split the signal. Because normally your speakers will be standing yeah. in the corner of your, yes. of your home. Not, and you need all the equipment to, the to be there. Exactly. Okay. So, so actually, with this one, I, can, I had a dream of making my record player wireless. Mm. But with this one, I with actually can. can. Yeah, okay. Exactly. And another advantage is that for, we all know about software updates. Yeah. Software update is an issue today in, in, many, uh, in many parts of, of, of our industry. Very and much. here you can simply update uh, the software by a USB stick. Yeah, okay. uh, so that's kind of future proof, you can yeah. say, for whatever coming of a further or future uh, And we don't use that updates. word much in our world. No. Because it, <laughs> that's a bold statement. Exactly. Um, but, also, but also another little thing about having this as, as a standalone is also the freedom of choice. Yeah. Uh, because uh, many people don't, have, don't want to have stuff like this standing around. No. So you can actually hide it away. Once you have set this up, you can hide it away. And then you only have the speakers standing. Um, and even uh, the, the remote control for this sound hub is by Bluetooth. So you yeah. don't have any problem with no. having this put away uh, in a drawer or in a cupboard. Perfect. Yeah. But, and uh, series-wise, we've got the Oberon C, hmm? 
Uh, you mentioned the Callisto. We also have the, you have the Callisto model, yes. and uh, then we have the Rubicon C. The Rubicon we C. have the Rubicon 2C exactly. and the Rubicon 6C here. One of the challenges uh, we, we gave ourselves, now we're standing here looking at the whole range of different products. Yeah. One of the challenges we gave ourselves when developing this was that the setup of this system should be as easy or even easier than setting up a traditional amplifier, speaker cable drawing and all that yeah. you normally do at home. So when you bring this home, you need five push on a button and in less than one minute, you are ready to go, then your amplifier, and, or then your, your speakers and your hub is connected. It's ready. Yeah. Okay, so one speaker power, one speaker power, one sound hub compact. Exactly. Power, connect, then you're ready to go. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that sounds easy. Exactly. But uh, for example, if you look over here, we have the, the Rubicon 6C. Um, the Rubicon C series is available in three different finishes. There's a, yeah. a white and a black high gloss, but there's also this beautiful uh, real wood veneer, yeah. uh, walnut. Uh, uh, yeah, it looks amazing. Exactly. And, and the Rubicons are, uh, it's a traditional speaker from our side. Um, it's a six-year-old series now yeah. where we're taking that into a Rubicon C series here. But, but yeah, but you knew this speaker was good, but, but now you've put in an exactly. amplifier. Yeah. yeah, and it's still available as a passive. It's still speaker. available yeah. as a passive. So, so actually we had a question about uh, this uh, module. Mm -hmm. you, you use two tweeters? We call it a hybrid uh, tweeter hybrid module. Tweeter. Okay. Um, and it's actually because uh, we have here taken on some of our speakers where we have the space. Yeah. Because yeah. on some small solutions, okay. we simply don't have the space to, to use the oh, hybrid too, tweeter module. Too big. But on a product like this one, we have, um, you can say we have taken the best of two worlds. We have taken a dome tweeter and combined it with a ribbon tweeter. Yeah. So the dome tweeter here is actually an oversized dome tweeter. Um, bigger than what you normally see on the market size-wise when it comes to dome tweeters. Yeah. And the advantage of that is that it gives a better power handling for the, for the yeah, tweeter, okay. yeah. but it also goes deeper in the frequencies, ah. so it gives better integration with the mid-range in the speaker. Okay. So some ranges are played by this one only, and some ranges are played by the ribbon tweeter only. Exactly, okay. because the disadvantage about a dome tweeter, yeah. uh, and an oversized dome tweeter, is that the higher up you get in the frequencies, the more pointy it gets. Ah, okay. And then, on top of that, we have the ribbon tweeter, yeah. which then will make sure to spread the sound, okay. and take care of the higher frequencies. And there, but there's no crossover between the two. They simply roll off okay. and on. Okay, roll off and on. Okay. So you don't hear the two sweeters. You only exactly. hear one sweeter. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It looks good. It looks good. And it that's good. kind of been the signature for a Dallas speaker yeah. over the years. Yeah. But in general, I would say that uh, when using a product like this, um, uh, and now we spoke about the Blue Oz module before, which opens up what we call streaming of yeah. music. And, um, and uh, I often hear or read on different medias about that uh, music streaming never can be as good as yeah, playing quality. from a traditional source like a CD or yeah. LP. And we will guarantee that you will be surprised to, to hear the, the level of quality you get from a setup like this one. So actually you promise if people use Tidal Hi-Fi or now Spotify has a Hi-Fi, exactly. uh, you can get just as good sound yes. from this product. One yeah. thing is that we make a good quality, but another thing is today is that people at home have better routers they have better Wi-Fi with a, with a wider bandwidth. Yeah. So simply it allows also streaming in a higher quality. And there is a number, as you said yourself, a number of streaming services available these days. Yeah. So this goes very well into that philosophy. Um, the number of speakers, I didn't ask you about that. Is, is this one hub, one set of speakers? This is one hub paired with one set of speakers. Yeah, okay. Yes. So, but can I... Buy more speakers and use you, the same hub? Or you can add up to, to eight pair of speakers. Yeah, okay, to, to this one hub. One. Yes, and yeah. that, and these, uh, now we, before we spoke about the Blue Oz module, yeah. uh, having possibility for another module in this one will open up in the future for possibilities in this because you can add more speakers. Ah. This will open up for a solution. Yeah, but okay. I think I will say more about that later on. So. But, but I, now I have to ask. But so when you say more speakers, some of us will think, what about surround? 
Yeah. Can you get wireless speakers this is, uh, using this? There's a reason why or? we have uh, made it available. Yeah, okay. uh, we have made the, the choice of being able to add more speakers. And that, of course, from the very beginning has been our ambition to come up with okay. the uh, HDMI nice. module and HDMI solution for this. So you allow a surround solution surround. for this one. Okay, so both for my customers, I think I can sell more if I can get it. Mm. And for my marriage, mm. my wife will be happy to yeah. <laughs> it go on the cables for the Yeah, it would mean, that you, mean that, that, uh, that you can actually have a surround solution at home. We yeah. don't need to have uh, speaker cables drawn from an amplifier yes. in the front to all the speakers. We we'll look forward so, to uh, that. So I think that's all I want to say now yeah, okay. about that. <laughs> okay. We'll leave it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, you... You uh, you you've got this range from right under ten thousand for a pair. Mm -hmm. You need a hub. You need two speakers, yeah. and we go up to around. We have uh, that. Uh, we end up in about forty thousand. Forty thousand. So okay. Yeah. So, so in euro, you would say you for us over on one C inclusive oh yeah, uh, 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 sound of compact. Yeah. Yeah. You end up at about thirteen hundred euro. Euro. Yeah. Okay. As a starting point. Yeah. Uh, and ending up. In an area around uh, four or five thousand uh, euro. Okay, so so going on is it, is module coming that cheaper or more expensive or where are you going? Um, we will probably not go cheaper. Okay, uh, we will uh, probably go higher and, and make okay. something even better at a certain point. Okay, but actually right now we have with the Oberon series the Callisto, yeah. the Rubicon C. We had now a wide selection yeah. because one important point that I didn't mention yet is that these two different solutions on the hub, you can combine that with each of the speakers in these three different series. Ah, so you can, as a okay. shop guy, having yeah. the, the customer coming in and you can tailor made it. Yeah. Do you need something for the TV with HDMI or do you need something for streaming of your music or connecting CD player or whatever? Then you can choose the So the different hub. quality is is in the speakers, not in the hub. Exactly. You can use the hub. Okay. Yeah. These works are both on the same protocol and the same platform. Yeah. So can Easy. be simply combined with each other as flexible as possible. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. It does. Maybe I should tell you uh, the, the, the Rubicon C, uh, when, when coming from a Rubicon traditional passive speaker to the Rubicon C, it kind of breathe new air into a speaker, which really, I think, is a, it's a charming point uh, for, for the Rubicon series. Okay. Because the Rubicon series now is, is uh, more than six years old. Yeah. The Rubicon was standing on, on the development of the, of the uh, Epicon, which was yeah. uh, a speaker many people know uh, as, as a really high-end speaker. Yeah. Uh, the Epicon is now close to, to nine years old. Yeah, and, 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 and your most expensive speaker. And the most expensive lineup. speakers, yeah. exactly. Yeah. When, when, we, when we did the Epicons, we used uh, a material, uh, an iron material called SMC, yeah. soft magnetic compound. Uh, and we used it in the Epicons. And after that, we made the Rubicons, uh, where okay. we were based the, the development of the Rubicon on what we learned by doing ah. the Epicons. Uh, basically, that SMC material, to keep it as short and as simple as possible, is we replace parts of the voice coil and the, and the pole piece, uh, where we replace traditional iron with SMC material. Yeah. It's still magnetic conductive, uh, but it's no longer electrical conductive in that area. Okay. And, and, and using iron is, is a major problem for most uh, speaker manufacturers worldwide. Because about it, distortion? Or, yeah. Coming distortion from yeah. that area, it's simply you, you, you create eddy current in that area, and that gives a, 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 a distortion. It also develops heat in that yeah. area. Uh, and heat is, uh, we know that from, from our physics lessons, yeah. heat is, is uh, simply loss of, of uh, energy. Yeah. We don't want en energy to be lost here. We want the energy from the amplifier yes. to be transmitted into to pure sound. To and then it doesn't get heat up when you use the SMC material. Okay, so you use SMC, uh, yeah. First off in Epicon, and now you, you use it on series. And now it's, it's, it's in more or less the, all our, our Talking ranges. about that Epicon series, it's, you, you yourself mentioned it was eight or nine years old. You know mm. this question is coming now, but I know. What, what about a new one? Mark II or just another model? Or It's a question we very often get. Yeah. Uh, and, and honestly, uh, it's, uh, the hardest part from our side is to, to make something better yeah, okay. now. Because we still believe we, we made the, the perfect speaker at that time. We still believe it looks good. Aesthetics on the Epicons are pl 
yeah. cool, cool yeah. speakers. Um, so it's difficult, but we also know that it's nine years old. So there okay. will be coming something new in that end at some point. Uh, nothing I can tell you about, okay. but, but we, we, we are, of course, well aware. Yeah, okay, so for now we enjoy the Epicon and exactly. look forward to Exactly, but there will be something that. new at a certain time. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, in general, I would yeah. say that uh, I think we've been around most yeah. of it. Uh, yeah. I still, uh, what the, for me, what the, the, one of the very, very important parts of, of this system is the flexibility. Yeah. Uh, where you, no matter if you go for a sound solution for a TV or you just want to listen to music in a high quality, we have solutions here for everything. Yeah. With the number of products we now have, have both with bookshelf speakers, with yeah. flower, uh, to, uh, floor standing speakers, we have on-wall speakers in different uh, price levels you can find the solution. So it's simply just a matter of coming down to your local hi fi club and ask for a solution, which yeah. is tailor-made for, for, your, for your home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and also, um, I, I see benefits from, from moving it. If, today, if, if you have Good point. this in your living room mm -hmm. or wherever, mm -hmm. you, you can just put it in your kitchen for one night if you... Or bring it to a ter terrace in the summertime. Or bring it, yeah. yeah. yeah because okay. basically, you don't need the Wi-Fi here. No. Most people today, they would have something music local on your phone yes. or on your iPad. Yes, exactly. uh, you can bring it to terrace, you can bring it to your, your, your summer house uh, yeah, okay. at the beach because it connects you. You just power it on yeah. and when it once has been paired together, yeah, okay. these products, it will simply pair immediately. Just Again, you just connect power. music to it via Bluetooth or by a cable and then plays. So I don't, it's difficult to name many products yeah, that can do yeah, the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very flexible product. Yeah. So it is. This it is, is also yeah. the future. I think. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It is perfect. But yeah, Thomas. Anything else? Or I think uh, I've been around uh, most yes. of the things I wanted Me to too. say today, and uh, and the nice questions from, yeah, yeah. from people out there. Um, yeah, that was very good to hear some news from you. Uh, we always look forward to that. Uh, now we look very much forward to get some customers in to talk about these products. We can all sell them look forward to products. get out there again. And we all have look the forward to that. Open, yeah. And to you, thank you very much for watching. And uh, before you leave, um, I know the guys at Dali has one small thing they want to show you. So stay tuned for a little more. Um, here at the end, we are so fortunate to have uh, another visitor from Dali. Yeah. Um, you're the product manager. That's correct. Christian Müller Pedersen. Yes. Um, and you're here to talk a little about uh, headphones. Yes. Um, some news about headphones and why a loudspeaker company even does headphones. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, and I think many would, would ask the same thing. Um, the reason, the main reason that we are making headphones are because the way we look at headphones are that a set of headphones is a set of loudspeakers on each side of the of the head. So it is basically a small set of, of loudspeakers. Um, and as it is today, lots of people listen to music on headphones. Um, and being a loudspeaker company, and we have a very clear idea of what a loudspeaker should sound and how a hi-fi system should sound, we simply thought that the general quality of uh, Bluetooth headphones on the market wasn't up to what we call hi-fi and we simply thought with our experience in loudspeakers if we can kind of uh, project that and utilize that into a set of headphones we'll be able to give customers the Dali hi-fi uh, experience on a set of headphones. Okay yeah you know you, you can't take a trip around town without seeing a lot of people using headphones nowadays yeah. and you you've got one headphone or? <laughs> we have two models um, Initially, they look the same because they're based around the same design. Okay. Uh, so it's basically two versions uh, of the same headphone. One is called IO4 and one is called IO6. Um, the difference is that the IO6 has noise reduction, um, okay. which is very useful uh, if you're traveling a lot in airplanes. At the moment, that's not what <laughs> no. so many do, but, but that, it's very handy because we, we, you can really suppress the background noise. Um, but as of the same design, um, the, and they're using the same batteries, but the power consumption of the noise canceling is, is, is quite high. So um, the IO4 um, does 60 hours battery life on a charge. Oh, that's a long time. Whereas the IO6 does 30 hours, which is still long, okay. but 60 hours is quite, quite unique. 
Yeah, okay, the 30 and 60 hours. Yeah, mm. you, can, you can listen to a lot of music on that. Um, in Hi-Fi Club, we've been so fortunate to sell the black version, the yes. caramel version, yeah. for around a year now. Yeah. And uh, then something new happened. Of course, yeah. Now we're just introducing um, two new colors, um, army green and chalk white. Um, I have to say, I, I just yeah. love this army green yeah. one, <laughs> especially the details. Yeah. And you see them inside? Maybe you could show it to us? Yes. Um, Inside, um, the cups, we got a red pattern, yeah. and we also have um, the cables are red. Um, so quite nice, small details. So these are definitely lookers. Yeah. Um, but we're not just here in the headphone business for the look, because if we were just someone that, that, that tried to, to make a headphone for the design and for the features, we wouldn't really uh, justify us being here. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's fair to say a little bit about the sound and, and, and mentioned before that we think we could make a difference. Um, I think it's fair to, to talk a little bit about what that difference is and why we, in the Dali headphones, believe that we made a better headphone. Yeah, so, so you use a lot of the technology you know exactly. from producing loudspeakers to it, make these headphones. It, exactly. I, general principle in a loudspeaker is that um, you st as with cooking, you need to have good ingredients. So, as a starting point, you need a really good driver, a loudspeaker transducer. Um, and when we looked in the headphone market, we realized that the transducers in headphones, the drivers, are fairly inexpensive and, and very small and, and quite different from a loudspeaker unit, uh, as you see in a, in a, in a, in a traditional loudspeaker. Um, the ones that we're using in the IO4 and IO6 is a custom-made Dali driver. Um, it's l much larger than the conventional ones. Ours are 50 millimeters um, versus the more traditional 40 millimeter in diameter. So it's a much larger uh, radiating area. It's, it's, it's constructed as a miniature loudspeaker. Um, it's got um, a free-moving suspension. It's got paper fiber cones. Just like, like the speakers, yeah? Just like the speakers. Uh, the magnet system um, and the voice call system, all that, the motor system has been optimized uh, exactly like if, if it was a um, traditional loudspeaker. Okay. Um, so that itself, making a much better drive unit, I mean, that's the starting, the basis for a good sound. Um, and this type of headphone driver um, is simply not seen in, in, in this price range of headphones. They do exist something similar, but at a much higher price point, much more audiophile headphones. Uh, so we're taking that into this level of, of, of headphones. Um, but the driver itself is, is not enough. It also needs to sit in a cabinet like, traditional, uh, in the, like a traditional loudspeaker. And also here we've used the experience we have from, from loudspeakers of making the, um, the back chamber as uh, acoustically dead and resonance free as, as possible. And one thing that actually that we, we found during the development and, and this is that um, typically headphones, they don't have any damping material inside the chamber. And it's like, we would never think of making a normal loudspeaker without any acoustic damping inside the cabinet. Um, so of course, that we've also utilized here. So it's got damping material inside the cabinet. It's actually the same felt damping material as we're using uh, behind the soft domes on, on our in-house tweeters. Yeah, tweeters. It makes a massive uh, difference in, in, in the mid-range resolution. So, it's like, uh, so yeah, sonically, our goal was to, to make the best sounding Bluetooth headphone uh, on the market. And the, looking at the reviews um, and customer feedback, we think we've achieved that. And, and we even got a, an ISA award last oh, year. Yeah. Yeah. So um, For best yeah. headphone. Best headphone. The pride range, yeah. So yeah, we are very Great proud work. of them. Yes, and we're so fortunate in Haifa Club to yeah. sell these headphones, yeah. and now we're looking very much forward to these two new cars. Yeah. Um, we think they're going to do good. We love them. Of course yeah. they will. Yeah. Of course they will. So, but thank you very much, Christian, yeah. oh, thank uh, you. for this presentation. Yeah. And um, You're welcome. We'll do our best. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and to all of you, uh, thank you very much for listening to these, uh, this stream. Um, we look so much forward to see you uh, out in the shops again. And... Uh, yeah, basically, we can't wait. It's a bit boring without new customers. Um, so, uh, for now, thank you very much for watching, and uh, have a nice day. See you.